we're live. Um, welcome. If you've just tuned in, um, my name's Gary Kasulu, and I'm going to hand over to Charles Appleby, who has put this together, worked tirelessly. Absolutely, you don't realise how much work goes into this to get all the speakers together and uh, get the coordination together. So let's hand over to Charles and what his expectations are of the next six hours. Charles. Thank you, Gary, and thank you so much for, uh, to everybody for joining us. So this is a webinar, What Do We Want From COP26? So the, this is the, me, this is the absolutely critical thing for this year. 2021 is a critical year for climate. The uh, moment we're on track for three degrees of global warming, and it needs to be 1.5 degrees. So today we've put together 20 speakers over 11 different sessions to give different views on this, get different dimensions, different aspects. So we're really, really pleased to be here at the keynote session with Brian Hagen and Gabriella Knutson. So um, I say we've got 20 sessions, 20 speakers across the day. Do please join when you can. Obviously this session is really important and the 5.30 final wrap up session is also really important where we bring everything together in terms of what next. So let me uh, let me ask um, Gabriella to introduce herself first, and then then Ryan, and then we'll get into some uh, get into the questions. What do we want from COP twenty six? So Gabriella, over to yourself. Hi everyone, thank you for having me on this panel. My name is Gabriella. I am a Durham University master's student studying sustainability, energy, and development. I am also a marketing master's student. I have. Uh, my dissertation research topic last year was within veganism and animal agriculture, and I am a huge proponent of sustainable dieting, and I do not like animal agriculture. Fantastic. So, Ryan, what about yourself? Crowdfunding sustainability. Tell us, um, tell us about you and about your project. Yeah, so my name's Ryan Hagen. I'm from the Boston area. The most important thing to know about me is that I'm a huge sustainability nerd. Uh, and this all started for me about eight years ago when this first crossed my radar and I was kind of shocked that no one was really talking about it. Um, and you know, when I was 20 or 21, I was trying to figure out what to do with my life, I wanted to do something meaningful. And the, the key realization for me was that at some point in my research it became clear that if we get climate wrong, nothing else is going to be right uh, because a safe climate gives us the basic building blocks of a functioning society, food, water, shelter, safety, pretty much everything and everyone that we care about relies on a safe climate. Um, and so ever since then, I ever since I grasped that basic idea, I've been trying to figure out, okay, what do we do about this? So I made a promise to myself to make a career out of reversing global warming. Um, and so I worked in clean tech for a few years and then still felt like we weren't moving fast enough and that I could be doing a bit more in my own small way. So I started crowdsourcing sustainability. Uh, and the idea behind that is that I'm just one person. I can only do so much. But if I could get as many other people as possible to work on solutions together, then we could have a pretty big impact. Um, so I've been working on that for a few years now and mainly building up community by writing a weekly newsletter to inform minds, touch hearts, and inspire action. Um, so yeah, that's a, a bit about me and the big thing to know is just, I'm a huge sustainability nerd, always learning, trying to level up my impact and trying to help other people do the same. Fantastic. So I'm sure people want to uh, know about your weekly newsletter, um, Ryan, but let's get straight to the heart of this, the, 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 the really big question. What do we want from COP26? So Ryan, would you like to go first and then uh, then we'll ask Gabriella to come in and talk about uh, diet and uh, agriculture. So Ryan, if you'd like to start on that one. Yeah, sure. Um, I'd like to preface this by saying that I'm sure this is an incomplete list of ideas and that my own thoughts will evolve over time. But some of the things that came to mind is just that I want world leaders in attendance to go beyond what they think is politically feasible and start committing to do and start doing the work 
that is scientifically necessary. And to echo Greta and millions of other active We've lost it. Ryan's silent. Um, Gabriella, while, while internet does fail us, do you want to jump in and tell us your view on that? Are oh, he's back. Immutable. These are physical. Oh, did I, I lose you guys? Can you hear me again? Yeah, we can hear you. Okay, sorry about that. Um, so I'll, I'll just skip to the next thing. I don't know what you heard and didn't hear, but um, so basically, we heard you saying world leaders to go beyond. Yeah, if you'd like to pick it up from there. Oh yeah. Um, so I want world leaders to go beyond what they think is politically feasible and start committing to doing the work that is scientifically necessary. Lost you. Bless him. All right, let, let, just for now, let's go to Gabriella and we'll let Ryan come back. Like maybe he's signal that uh, things happen. There could be something happening over there. R Gabriella, over to you. All right. Um, I just want to carry on from what Ryan was saying. I think that world leaders have a huge impact in what we do as individuals. And I believe that the world leaders can make us change. As you can see now during coronavirus, we have all gone into lockdown, changed our lives just because world leaders have told us to. And I believe that a huge part of our individual climate change and greenhouse gas emissions come from our diets. So I believe that the meat and dairy industry are causing a huge part of what are greenhouse gas emissions. For example, the New York Times said that the top three ways that we can reduce our individual carbon footprint are by flying less, eating fewer meat and dairy products, and having fewer children. So. For me, I live in the Czech Republic and study in the UK. I need to fly. I want children later in life. So for me, the most feasible option is to reduce my meat and dairy intake. And animal agriculture creates 13 to 14% of our entire global emissions. That's almost as much as all of transportation put together. And I believe this is an incredible statistic that we should not just overlook and that we need to realize every single day in our lives. For example, here at No CO2, we're all about planting trees, right? And I think that is an honorable and incredible mission that No CO2 already is doing. But unfortunately, one to two acres of the Amazon rainforest are cut down every minute because of animal agriculture. And so, for example, if we decrease our mean dairy intake, we can then plant trees at no CO2 and offset our different carbon footprint emissions like cars, travel, and for example, fashion. So yeah, I would really be interested in what Ryan Hagen thinks about that. I've been reading his newsletter for weeks now, and I think that he's, his topic of every single individual actions have consequences that we can come together for a common good. And I would like to know what he thinks about diet and sustainable dieting. So Gabriella, let me just both say fantastic. Thank you so much for putting on the table immediately uh, the fact that world leaders can make a difference to us as individuals. Uh, in the UK, we're just getting used to so many announcements of what the government has decided and what they're doing. This idea which you've talked about of engaging with us in what we can do Fantastic. So uh, over to Ryan. Yeah, if you can please respond to that. Fantastic. Thank you. Yeah, I think Gabriella is is spot on. Uh, our diet and the food system overall are a huge part of the solution here. Um, and you can you can see this, of course, in Project Drawdown's research. I think their third and fourth solution are a plant based diet and um, reducing food waste. So this is a huge opportunity to, you know, make ourselves healthier and eat better and also address the issue of global warming. So Ryan, let me ask you the question. You've talked about world leaders going well beyond what's politically feasible. Do you want to give us some uh, some examples of that? Because I think I think this is a very exciting agenda you're, you're touching on here. Yeah, 
Um, so I think one of the biggest mindset shifts that needs to happen is to make reverse reversing global warming the organizing principle of society and rooting that in justice. Uh, we need a world war-like mobilization at that level. We need science-based pledges. We need more industrial policy, and we need more private-public partnerships. We need these massive investments to accelerate climate solutions, and it needs to start happening much faster than what we've been seeing for decades. Um, the most concrete thing, of course, is upping the pledges themselves. I mean, that's symbolic. This is our goal. This is where we're going. That helps get alignment and buy-in and understanding from all sectors of the economy. Um, because like you said, Charles, we're on a path for three degrees. Oh dear. Okay, we've lost them. Gabriella, you, you every time we lose Ryan, just just jump in. Um, my my job my job is okay. to keep it all flowing, and, and that's let, fine. While we're waiting for Ryan, let me let me just say that um, for me, the the really critical thing is the commitment by world leaders to one point five degrees. Now, on from what Ryan has said, this may be politically uh, not feasible, but it is for us. It's, it's critically important. So if you're relatively new to this, then a little bit of history is that back in 2015, the world leaders made an agreement to keep global warming, and the quote is, well below two degrees. So to keep global warming well, well below two degrees. So in uh, October 2018, um, the um, world scientists of the IPCC said, hey guys, actually 1.5 degrees gives us a really much better world it's much closer to what we have now and it also reduces trigger points which could cause further damage so there's been a huge amount of discussion about 1.5 and the sentiment really is for me the sentiment is that you know surely 1.5 is going to happen you know it needs to happen everybody involved wants 1.5 but the official process, which is the COP26 meetings, have not yet said that this will happen. So this is the, because of the delay to COP26, this is the first meeting that's been for a couple of years. And so for me, at the heart of what we want from um, COP26 is the commitment to, to 1.5 degrees. And that's why we have the uh, amazing logo um, here, 1.5 max degrees max. So that's what, that's what I want. So, Ryan, do you want to try and come in again? Yeah, can you guys hear me? I'm so sorry about all the Wi-Fi issues here. Um, Gary, did you switch me to my phone? Yeah. Yeah, okay, I'm going to do that. You want to switch to your phone? While we're right. doing that, while we're... Do while we're, while we're doing with those technical things, Gabriella, tell us. I wanted to actually ask, just uh, do you think what Ryan is talking about, the government kind of um, moving towards a more green economy and a circular economy? I wrote a paper on how a green economy kind of leadership would um, create a better, like, a better vision of renewable energy in the Czech Republic about windmills, for example, they have a lot of social, political, economical problems and people don't really want them in their backyard. So I wonder if the green economy, like Ryan was kind of saying, if that is a way to stimulate that growth in renewable energy. And what do you think about that, Charles? Um, I think we have to have a green economy. I think the whole discussion, Gabriella, is is not about whether there is. It's about um, what the what the green economy means. So Ryan has put on the table um, issues of justice and um, the cost of it, the contribution. I mean, in terms of the cost, for for me, all of these costs have to be um, they have to be multipliers of people chipping in. I mean. You know, the government can't pay for, for all of this. It's got to be paid for by a combination of, uh, of the government pump priming money, um, businesses, large and small, and, and also us as, us as individuals making a contribution. And, and the contribution people can make now is to, is to plant some trees. So you can make that contribution. It's a voluntary contribution. It's a donation. You can just plant some trees. But let's get back over to, to Ryan on mobile now. 
Yes, hopefully this works better. Sorry about all that. Um, but yeah, I think, I think you're right, Charles. We need this from a lot of different levels, the private sector, the public sector, uh, individuals. This is really an all hands on deck type of situation. One other thing that I'd like to point out is we're still subsidizing fossil fuels or subsidizing the very thing that is kind of destroying the, the living conditions that we depend on. And the IMF has estimated this, you know, direct and indirect subsidies at $5 trillion a year, which is just insane. So I would love to see in COP26 a real focus on making these subsidies go away because it's been talked about for a long time. And to be honest, they're staying the same and in some cases have even gone up in recent years. So I think that's a, a huge thing. And another huge thing within government's control is their own procurement practices. So if you look at global GDP, uh, government spending is 20% of that. And they can procure zero carbon things for all of their operations. And that would help a lot to scale up um, the sustainable economy. Mm. Fantastic idea. So Gabriella, what did the Okay, here. Um, going off of the governmental subsidies, I 100% agree that that is the way forward. Kind of move shifting towards my topic, for example, the dairy industry has been declining since the 90s, and the only reason it is staying afloat is because of governmental subsidies. That's the reason why it is so much cheaper than plant-based milks. So, for example, if the government just chose to subsidize plant-based milks and other plant-based products instead of the milk industry. It would level out the prices, and then consumers would have a choice whether to try to go more plant-based or not. But I think kind of putting it on a level playing field is very important for the government. Now, so ask the question here, Gabriella. I, I didn't know that the government subsidized in dairy. Um, I mean, is, what is this? Is this the common agricultural policy that, that Brexit is now leaving? Do you want to tell us a bit more about that in terms of numbers? I mean, the famous pint of milk price. Well, Ga Gabriel, <laughs> Gabriella, my job is to keep us to time. So this is literally the last comment before I hand you a, um, a wand, a magic wand. OK, so look, answer Charles's question and then and then. I'm going to hand you this wand and ask you uh, what you'd wish. Because if we don't run to time, the whole thing won't be as efficient. So go for it, Gabriella, and then I'm going to hand you this wand. So instead of going into the nitty gritty of the numbers, I think for consumers and individuals, it is really important to be conscious and have do research on what they're consuming and eating every single day. For example, I think a really good visual would be to eat 40% meat and dairy products and 10% beef and pork products. I'm not asking everyone to go vegan, go vegetarian. I'm asking people to realize when they're eating meat and to be conscious of when they're consuming and hurting the environment while they're doing so. So I think a really good visual is 40 to 10%. And that is all from me. <laughs> See, we, just on that topic, we could talk another three hours. Easily, no problem. How long it would take logistically for farmers to turn that around and all kinds of things. But because we've got so such an action-packed six hours, I have to keep it to time. So I'm going to hand you an imaginary wand. And this wand can give you one wish. If you could get your wish within 30 seconds and tell us what that wish would be, would, would you be okay to answer that? Yeah, I think that I would want, yeah, as I said, just everyone to know and realize the effects that their consuming and consumption habits have on the planet and to try and reduce to 40% of meat and dairy and 10% of beef and pork because I think this would have a much, much larger impact than, say, even switching to an electric car. Obviously, we need to do everything, but down to 40% meat and dairy and 10% beef and pork will have... I think, I think what you've asked for is quite achievable. Yes, I, I think that's I really achievable. Um, Ryan, I'm going to hand you the same magic wand. It's got one wish. What would you ask that wish to be? Love it. Um, I'm going to ramble off a couple things real quick, and then I'm going to take multiple wishes. I apologize. <laughs> um, 
I just like to add on, I didn't, I didn't get to everything here because these tech issues, but I think we also need to focus on protecting and healing the carbon sinks. And you guys are doing some great work to that end. Uh, we need to invest in indigenous communities and that can be key for that issue and also invest heavily in regenerative agriculture. I also think more youth representation at these talks would help a lot as would other historically underrepresented voices because diversity is a major strength and we need everyone's voice, courage, leadership, experience, and ideas on this. Um, and my final thought here is, is that I think that we citizens can't just sit back and hope our representatives will be bold enough to make COP26 a success. It'd be somewhat naive to expect them to succeed when they've failed or fallen short in so many ways over the past 30 years. So we need to be in their ears making these demands. But in addition to making demands, we the people also need to step up. We need to take action within our spheres of influence leading up to COP26. And this will do two things. It will keep us moving forward, accelerating progress, making necessary sustainable changes in the places we live and work. But it will also increase the probability that COP26 is a success. And it increases this probability of su success because world leaders and politicians aren't actually leaders. They're followers. Hmm. They follow public opinion to stay in power. So we, the grassroots citizens, employees, people everywhere, we need to put in the work now to make as much progress as possible before COP26 to show them that climate action matters. Well, to well Ryan, we just, we just have to open our eyes to see that what you've just said is absolutely factual, but we won't mention any countries in case we upset anyone, but it's right there. You don't have to look very hard. Now, I'm a big into networking. Gabriella, have you ever met Ryan before? I have not. I added him on LinkedIn a few days ago. The two of you can change the world by, by getting to know each other. What For a smooth transition into the next... Um, into the next speaker. I'd like to bring them on and then connect you all together. The other way to connect us is to tell, uh, tell everyone what your Instagram handle is, uh, what your Twitter handle is. The best way to contact you, because somebody might be watching this and think, I really could speak with Ryan. I could make a difference. And that reaction, we can change the world by networking with the right people. Because maybe uh, Tony Robbins, he says, when you lack resource, you become resourceful. We might just have a billionaire watching this thinking, I might just plow in a few million pounds into this project. You never know. So, um, um, Gabriella, uh, you go first. What, uh, how would you, what's your ideal way of being contacted? Um, I think by email, that would be Gabri, G-A-B-R-I, Knutson, K-N-U-T-S-O-N, at gmail.com. I'm open to any networking opportunities and I'd be glad to talk with anyone in the future. Great. Ryan, over to you. Uh, how do you like to be contacted? Yeah, so folks, I think the easiest way is just to honestly Google crowdsourcing sustainability. Uh, and there you can sign up for the, the newsletter if you'd like and also my email is there somewhere as well as all the all the socials so that's probably the best place but gary my magic wand please hand over my wand yeah what what's really where are you on the screen are you below me or next to me i'm next to you well, i'm gonna have yeah. well, let's do a virtual one there you go okay <laughs> thank you thank you gary so uh well gabriella brian fantastic so amazing um, the comment about world leaders, um, that needs to go in, in highlights, uh, Ryan, thank you for that. So I don't want to miss out on my magic wand opportunity. So for me, it, it is 1.5 degrees. I want world leaders to agree 1.5 at COP26 in November. Um, I want, very much in the same spirit as we've all talked about, I want people to choose. I want people to choose that they want to stop global warming and to protect nature. And Ryan, thank you so much for putting nature on the table here. And of course, it's implicit in what Gabriella said about agriculture as well. The point about protecting, preserving, regenerating nature is so critical. We need to do that. There's a load of stuff about that. Um, it's just so, so important. So Gary, 
We've got to keep the time, so over to you. To it's running like a Swiss clock. Button. It's running like a Swiss clock. I'm gonna. The next two speakers are gonna come on, and we're gonna do some networking. Um, but uh, please feel feel the next couple of minutes up. I'm I'm technically putting it all together. I'm so excited at the difference that we can make here. I really am. I, and I think that by connecting people together and we can be really resourceful. Ah, here's a man that knows about resources. Where are you today? Uh, hi. Um, well, I, I would just, just, I want to say that I'm really thrilled at what uh, Ryan and Gabriel have said. But tell us where you are. People. Tell us where you are. Uh, I'm in Corsica. So, you know, it's, a, it's an island in the Mediterranean. Very beautiful uh, place. Uh, its nickname is the Island of Beauty. Well, yeah, um, and and um, had you ever met these two before? These two amazing people? No, first, uh, first time we meet, but uh, I have to say that uh, I'm very hopeful when I see uh, you know, the next generation uh, with uh, precise, concrete propositions which are reasonable, they are not maximalist, they, they, yeah, I, I think that, that's the way to go. And really, uh, Ryan, uh, kudos to you because you realized three years before I did that uh, this could become your career. And, uh, so I, I, I had to wait until 2015 to, to do that. And Gabriel, I think that's your message about the diet. It's very practical and anybody can do. Thank, Thank you. you. So, um, sorry. Um, just before we finish, I wanted to just put out a question to yeah Ryan and now Stephen as well. I know you're um, you were saying that each of us can do individual actions. Could you just tell me and the followers kind of what some of those would be? Just some concrete other actions. Obviously, of course, I said diet, but some other ones as well. Yeah, sure. I've I've actually done a little research on this and asked a bunch of climate and sustain sustainability experts from the likes of, you know, Bill McKibben to Gina McCarthy. We're going to have to ask Nathan you to Hato. speed yourself up, sir. We, okay. we, this is a Do true that. transition. And can everyone use the chat on the side? This is a way I want everybody to network with each other. Put your Twitter handles on there. Put your Instagram handles. Let's connect people that are passionate about this subject. Sorry, Ryan, go for it. And then we've got a new person in the room. Some of the, the, the top actions are to just speak up with your friends, family, coworkers on this, uh, you know, vote climate and to start organizing and collaborating with other people to actually join a movement um, of other people so that we can go bigger and farther together. Can I, you, can I acknowledge you both? Acknowledge you both as, as amazing human beings. Um, what people might not know is they've given up their time today. To, and when you speak, you always do research. So I'm sure that you've both done research and spent hours on preparing for today. So I acknowledge you both for, for coming on. Don't be a stranger. Please be a friend. Connect with new people. And um, I, I'm, I'm going to now hand over to our new two new speakers. And um, Charles, do you want to introduce them? Gabriella and Ryan, we'll, sp we'll speak to you later. Thank you very much.